Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the Salesforce Winter 24 release notes. We have the slide deck pulled up here. We're looking at these customizations. This is around permission sets and being able to report on them now, which is kind of crazy. So we'll be jumping right into that. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notification bell. I'm putting out new Salesforce content each week. And let's go ahead and jump into this video. Now the link for this is in the description of the video. If you want to take a look at the slide deck yourself, there's over 300 slides. So there's so much information to look at, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the video looking at customization. So the first one up is a big one. You can now report on permission set assignments. This is the fifth most voted idea on idea exchange. If you don't know what idea exchange is, this is a place where people can go upvote ideas for enhancements and Salesforce periodically goes in and picks some of the most upvoted ideas and then creates the enhancements for them. So this now allows us the ability to report on permission set assignments. Customers want an easy way to report on permission set assignments via reports and dashboards. So now you can create a custom report type for the permission set assignment object and select which fields from the permission set permission set group or to be included in the report. So this allows you to create a custom report type for permission set assignment object and select which fields from permission set, permission set group or user to be included in the report. So now you can just run a report by user or permission set and see who is assigned to it all in one place. We have a screenshot on the right that shows us that it's grouped by user and it can see what permission set they are assigned to. This is a great update. I know I ran into this issue myself and many, many other people have as well. So I'm so happy to see this rolling out and I'm sure everyone else is happy to see it too. Next up, another great update. Permission set summary view delivers a top voted idea on idea exchange. So admins need to be able to easily understand what to access a given permission set grants. So now a no configuration needed, use the new view summary beta button on permission sets and permission set groups so you can quickly understand what is in a permission set or permission set group. Now you can see it on the right here, we have a screenshot of what that looks like. This is a great update as well. It's gonna save so much time being able to just quickly look at this information versus having to dig for it. So I cannot wait to see this. Next up, we have report on account share delivers. There's another top rated idea exchange. So this is great to see. Um, customer need audits of accounts access for manual sharing or membership in an account team. So the solution admins can create a custom report type based on account share. Then in a report filter on row cause equals manual or row cause equals team. So now you can schedule a report to send account share access details to the inter internal compliance team. So this is great for productivity and self-service. We can see who has shared uh, memberships and account teams. And this is another great idea that is coming out and I'm glad to see this being rolled out as well. Next up, we have report on members of a public group and queue. Clicking in setup or running a SQL query to determine who is in a public group or queue takes time. So admins can create a custom report type based on group member, then in a report filter on group type equals regular for public groups or group type queue. So managers move reps in and out of queues and can use an admin created report to check the regular membership of a queue. Admins can eat more easily determine who is in public groups helping with troubleshoot shooting access issues. I've run into this issue myself, so I'm happy to see this being rolled out in this release. This is going to be a great update for us admins. Next, we have API names in permission sets. So API names of object and fill permissions. We got a screenshot on the right of exactly what that looks like. So easily understand which object or field you're granting access to in a permission set in the event you have multiple objects and fields with the same label. So no configuration needed. As an admin, you can have two objects with the same label and you need to know which one uh, your permission set is granting access to. And now we can see that. So this is great for us admins. Next up here, we have permission set group improvements. Recalculate groups and understand failures. So permission set groups can end up in a failed status requiring contacting customer support. Prior to this change, there was no easy way to identify why the permission set group ended up in a failed status. So no configuration needed. If a permission set group moves into a failed status, a status message will display letting you know why. There is also a new recalculate button. This will be such a time saver from having to open up support items and you're able to recalculate the group and try to fix it yourself. But obviously you can still open a ticket if you need to, if you can't figure it out. This is a great update being rolled out as well. 
Next up, we have faster account sharing recalculations. So record access and sharing improvement, changes to the account sharing rules or WAD defaults, and record owners can take a long time, especially when doing annual sales realignments. So this enables the release, update, and production, faster completion of annual or periodic account ownership realignments. So the impact is 3x performance improvements observed in early testing. Apparently, this is dependent on customer data shape and configuration. But hey, this is great to see any increase in performance that we can see in our orgs is always welcome. Next up, we have translation workbench language filters. So now customers supporting apps and customization to other markets rely on the translation workbench for translation. For large translations in many languages, the existing function uh, proved cumbersome. So now they've introduced a language filter on the translation workbench exports, which enables the customer to select the languages required. The option to select export type is now available, which will limit the exported files only to the selected language. So this is a lot you know, easier and it should improve, um, improve productivity. So this, this is a great update uh, for anyone that is using this feature currently. Now let's take a look at the Salesforce backup and restore. So protect CRM data against permanent data loss and corruption with data backups and the ability to restore data from backup. Admins can install the managed package, configure a backup policy and settings in as little as 10 minutes using clicks, not code. So an integration or use error causes data loss or corruption in a customer's org, but backup and restore can restore loss or corruption data from a prior backup. Now this is a great update. So I mean, little as 10 minutes, you can't beat that and it requires no code. So I think this is a great update from Salesforce being pushed out and it looks like it is an add-on that is required, but that's okay, glad to see it. And that was the last update for the customization section. If you found this video informative, make sure you give it a like. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in the next one.